Androgens are male hormones, chiefly testosterone, that is released by the Leydig cells under the stimulation of luteinizing hormone. And they are the ones that play their role in the male traits and reproductive activity. They mainly have two activities. Testosterone, for example, has two activities. One is its androgenic activity and the second is the anabolic activity. The androgenic function include secondary male sexual character development and also the maturation of the reproductive organs. While the anabolic role is its role in increasing the mass and strength of skeletal muscles and also the role in erythropoiesis. Now testosterone has a ratio of anabolic to androgenic action that is 1 ratio 1. Now we have different androgens, the ones that occur naturally and the ones that we synthesize and use for different uh, conditions. The naturally occurring androgens are testosterone, androstenedione, dihydrotestosterone and dehydroepiandrosterone. The synthetic are further classified into the ones which have predominantly androgenic actions and anabolic activity is low while the others which have predominantly anabolic actions and decreased androgenic activity. The synthetic androgens which have predominantly androgenic action are methyl testosterone, fluoxymesterone and esters of test testosterone. The esters can be that of cipionate and propionate or enanthate etc. Now the naturally occurring and the synthetic with predominantly androgenic actions have the same uses so we'll discuss them together. Firstly, they are metabolized in the liver and they have extreme first pass metabolism so we should give them intramuscularly. Their use is primarily in the hormone replacement therapy in men with hypogonadism and the route uh, of administration is transdermal to maintain a constant therapeutic level of the hormone. It can also be used in HIV patients with decreased testosterone to increase the muscle mass and strength. Thirdly, it can also be used in senile osteoporosis, that is the one related to age. The side effects of these hormone uh, therapies when used in females can be the development of male characters such as hirsutism, deep voice, breast atrophy, acne, etc. It can also cause cholestatic jaundice because this is eliminated by the liver and in high doses it can cause this. In children it will cause short stature because of premature closure of the epiphysis. They can also cause sodium and water retention due to their mineralocorticoid activity. They are contraindicated in pregnancy because of the viralization of the fetus because the fetus will present the same uh, male characteristic uh, development and it is contraindicated in cardiac and renal disease and also in prostate and breast cancer because these cancers usually have androgenic receptors and in response to testosterone hormone they will increase their growth. Now coming to the synthetic androgens which have predominantly anabolic effects also known as anabolic steroids. They are nandrolone, oxandrolone, stenozolol, methandienone and ethyl estrinol. How they're used is in chronic illnesses to improve the overall well-being of the patient and to increase the appetite. They can also be used in recovery from surgeries, burns and chronic illnesses uh, by increasing the overall well-being of the patient and its anabolic activity. It's also used to counteract the action of cortisol. You know that cortisol will decrease the lean body mass and increase ex uh, energy expenditure so testosterone will reverse that. It can also use, be used in uh, postmenopausal and senile osteoporosis and also used to treat itching that is associated with biliary obstruction and the itching is due to bile salt deposition under the skin. Lastly, let's see some anti-androgens. They oppose the androgenic action by four different ways. Firstly, we have physiological antagonists of androgens. Then we have uh, drugs that will inhibit testosterone synthesis. Thirdly, we have androgen receptor antagonists. And lastly, we have 5-alpha reductase inhibitors 
which will actually inhibit the conversion of testosterone into DHT, that is dihydrotestosterone, which is the active form and has more effects and functions. The physiological antagonist of uh, androgens is estrogen. What it does is it inhibits GNRH uh, GN release and thus inhibits FSH and LH and as you know LH is necessary to secrete testosterone so testosterone will also be inhibited. Secondly, testosterone synthesis inhibitors are ketoconazole which is basically an antifungal drug and it will inhibit testosterone synthesis both in the adrenals and in the gonads. Thirdly, we have androgen receptor antagonists. Uh, first is spironolactone. It inhibits the um, uh, androgen receptor as well as it will inhibit the synthesis as well. The side effects of spironolactone, if you remember, it is used as a potassium sparing diuretic, so it will cause hyperkalemia. It causes gynecomastia because it is an androgen antagonist, of course, and menstrual abnormalities in females. Secondly, we have ciprotron acetate beclotamide and flutamide we use them in prostate carcinoma uh, because this cancer can also have androgenic receptors in hirsutism and in acne in both males and females the adverse effects can include importance and hot flushes gynecomastia liver damage decreased spermatogenesis and gi side effects like nausea vomiting and diarrhea Lastly, we have the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. What they do is they will inhibit the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, which is the active form and it has many functions. The 5-alpha reductase inhibitors are mainly used in BPH and this therapy should be long term because if the therapy is discontinued, the hyperplasia will come back. And in combination with alpha-2 blockers, uh, its efficacy is even increased. And the major drugs that can be used are finasteride and dutasteride. Dutasteride is long-acting. That's all.